Hey there, welcome back. Today I want to show you how to open or disassemble the Forework VR200. And But before we get to it, I want to quickly address that um, I wanted to open it because of this error message. It says that the brush is blocked, but you do not need to in, if this is your error message. What you need to do is to take a little contact spray and put it where the brush is inserted, right there. And leave it roughly for a day and then it should be fixed. Now let's get to open the machine up. We start by pressing for about 3 seconds the power button and shut the device down. Then we turn the device on the back, remove the ba back plastic that is on top of the brush. Then you can remove the brush. Put this thing away and then we can remove the edge brush on the bottom right. Next we need to the remove the battery just open these two screws. Then remove the top plastic sheet. And try to push the battery out by pulling a screw under this black tape and then Pull it up. Then unplug the battery by putting the white no by pressing the white notch down, and then you can just pull it off, as you can see here. Next, we're going to remove the screw hidden under the silver plastic. Next, we're going to remove the white plastic on top of the dusk canister. Just push a little bit in with a screwdriver and you can remove it. Now, we come to the most difficult part of this disassemble. Um, you need to make this top white plastic where the forework is written on away and there you need to use a larger screwdriver because otherwise you destroy the plastic at the edge and you need to put the screwdriver at these four red dots you see in the picture um, in because there are little holes and it is better to remove. You need to be patient because otherwise you destroy something but you need to apply a lot of force. So. Be patient and try it several times, that's what worked for me. Then we need to remove these three little springs. and remove the four screws. Then we can pull the plastic ring away and put it aside. Next step, by bending this acrylic, you can remove this. Just pay attention, there are two little buttons, you can remove them from their mount and then try to work around them. Then you can put this aside and then there's an, the last difficult part, the uh, last difficult thing, you need to get these white little dots right and left on the right and left top out of the mounting and this is done by the following. You lift the top up and then you 
put a screwdriver on the top right and squeeze it and bend it and again with patience so at some point you can put, pull it out. Repeat the process shown in the video on the left side. Then everything is going to get easier if you remove the start, the green start button on the bottom left. But I f found this out when I assembled the machine back together. Now, when you take the bumper and bend it a little bit to the left, like the left side bumper, bend it a little bit to the left, you can see that you can pull, pull it out, but pay attention, there is a spring at the tip so that it doesn't fly, that is, it does not fly away somewhere. Again, repeat this process on the right side. Now you can easily remove the white plastic and then put it aside. The next step is to remove the little plastic thing atop the LEDs on the bottom of the device. Now we can unplug the three cables that connect the proximity sensor of the bumpers with the device. To clarify, here you can see how the springs are connected with the bumper. The next step is to remove all visible screws. Note that the longer screws are inserted in the holes where you see this little triangle extruded from the plastic part. Next, we are going to remove the screen. Therefore, remove the tiny little screw that you can see around the screen. Now you can see one cable connected at the top of the screen. Remove this. Then turn the screen around and remove and carefully remove the second larger connector. Now we can recognize that there are two additional screws hidden under the screen. Let's remove them. The main black plastic covering the motherboard and motors is now able to come off. So we can lift it a little bit up. Now we can remove the spring right there which holds the wheel of the device in place. Be careful because this, there is a lot of pressure and if you let the spring loose, it can smash you in the face or something. Repu repeat the process on the other side. And then we can remove the relays that check whether the machine is closed which you can see in the picture with the orange and blue wire. There are two plastic notches that hold these relays in place. Just push them in a little bit and with a little bit of persu persuasion you can get them out. Now that we can see the main board, we can remove the four screws holding it in place. Then we can remove the translucent barrier that separates the brush motor and the motherboard.
Now we can lift the motor up, as you can see in the video. And push it a little bit to the right. Now the motor is completely free and you can, for example, exchange it if it is broken. To get a closer look, we can open the two screws holding the black box to the motor. Then we can open the three screws that close the black box. Next, by using a knife, you can cut the tape open that holds the box together and then we can see inside. If you have the arrow I showed you in the beginning, the white gear should be blocked. Now let's look at the unit that sucks the air in and which is probably under the laser tower, the black circle at the top of the device. To do so, you can lift the laser tower up. If you want to exchange this unit, you can unplug the cables, but I just put that thing aside. Now you see two screws that hold the black plastic that separates the Technic area with the air sucking part. <laughs> now you can remove these plastic things that hold the cables in place and pull the cables aside. Now we are able to remove the plastic and we can see the motor that sucks the air in, as you can see in the picture right there. Here you can also see the plus and minus pole that um, leads to the back of the device in order to charge it. So if you have charging issues, you might need to open this up. Now let's close it again. And as you can see on the top left, whilst closing it, there is the speaker hidden. So if you don't hear any sound from your device, there is the problem. Now let's put the brush motor back in. Close the black box, screw it back into the motor and put the motor back in to the chassis. Now let's look under the motherboard. Therefore we ne need to unplug a few cables. Here you can see the proximity sensor for the side and the motor for the side or edge brush. So if this doesn't work, you can exchange this motor right there. Now let's close everything back together. This is done as I showed you just the other way around. Here you can see that luckily the device is working again. I hope this video helped and maybe leave a like or subscribe. Thanks and stay curious. Bye.